So in this talk, I want to talk about uh, locality sensitive hashing. Um, so the motivation for this problem is the case when we have a large number of data points and we want to search within uh, that large database and find similar items um, in, in, that, in, in that database. As an example, imagine you show, you want to shop on Amazon.com and you find an item. Amazon is uh, suggesting a few similar items to this one to you. And uh, we want to see how this is actually being done. Is it the case that they, they naively compare this, uh, this item with every single item that they have or how or what's the basic method that they use that they can provide similar items in such a fast way? Or as an as another example, if you look at, um, imagine you are shopping for shoes on Nike website, and you want to see, and then the website is suggesting similar shoes to you. Uh, how we want to see how this is done. This is a very common problem. In real world and um, obviously the naive uh, solution to this problem um, is to compare every pair of items and uh, pick the most similar ones um, this is uh, this is this I uh, this approach requires quadratic amount of time or quadratic amount of space which doesn't really work in real world in case work in cases when um, the number of items is very large. Um, so locality sensitive hashing is a solution to this problem and it's basically an approximate nearest neighbor search method that we want to um, discuss. Um, the way locality sensitive hashing um, um, solve this problem is through, as the name suggests, is through hashing. And this hashing is, uh, as the name again suggests, it's locality sensitive. It's basically hashing similar items uh, closer to each other. Um, this is very uncommon way of doing hashing in computer science. Um, if you notice, uh, many other there are many examples of hashing algorithms in uh, computer science, and usually in hashing we want to avoid collision. We don't want to hash to the same bucket. Uh, in many traditional um, traditional methods of hashing in, in computer science, for instance, uh, in cryptographic algorithms um, like SHA-256, which uh, which is the basic cryptographic hashing algorithm for for Bitcoin and on other uh, cryptocurrencies, the idea is to hash strings as far apart as each other. Uh, so for instance, if I hash, uh, if I use SHA-256 and hash word hello, I get a string that is completely different than the case uh, when I use SHA-256 on the word hello with just one L. As you can see, these hash values are completely different. But in LSH, we want this to be the other way around. We want the hash to be uh, we want we we want to have collision for similar items, and of course this is up to debate. What do you mean by similar items? And uh, we will be discussing these uh, these issues next. Um, so we want to see. Um, we have a bunch of data, as you can see in this picture. And this data could be um, could be coming from many different applications. So in this example, I'm showing data from a TensorBoard run that I had, and um, basically it shows a graph and embeddings. Uh, we want to compare these embeddings that we found through um, as the final output of a neural network model, and we want to to compare them in a way that we don't necessarily compare unrelated embeddings. We just want to compare closer embeddings with each other. 
and uh, we want to put them in this closer embeddings into similar bu uh, similar buckets. And so um, the first question is is basically how do we do this hashing or uh, does a family of hash functions actually exist such that we can do this uh, hashing in, in this way? We, we can so we can hash uh, similar items into similar buckets. Um, uh, as I said earlier, uh, we want to we want we appreciate collisions between uh, similar items. And that's that's what interesting to us because in that case then we can uh, instead of searching for all all data points in the database we when we have a we have a data point we only need to search uh, for the points closer to that point within that specific bucket so this kind of reduces the quadratic time problem for a quadratic time problem into a kind of a linear time problem for us and it's significantly useful in practice. Sometimes also in practice uh, what people do is that they enforce a maximum bucket size for these buckets so that they can even like uh, a bucket size of 100 means that we can at most have 10,000 comparisons uh, 100 times 100 is equal to 10,000 so that's that's the maximum number of comparisons that we could have in a bucket and that's that's basically um, in makes makes the problem very mu much more efficient so the ultimate goal is that <coughs> we want to see what I we want to find a family of hash functions such that uh, Two points x and y hash to the same bucket if they are similar. Or in other words, the probability of them hashing to the same bucket is proportional to their to a to their similarity score. And the measure of this similar as this measure of similarity score is actually very important because it's dictating whether these hash functions are exist or not. <coughs> So the caveats of this method is uh, basically that uh, as opposed to a complete brute force search, this is approximate nearest neighbor search. This is prone to errors. We might end up with cases that a pair of items do not hash to the same, a pair of similar items rather do not hash to the same bucket. <clears throat> and so these are basically false negative cases and um, false negative cases are catastrophic in this example because this means that um, there are similar items that do not hash to the same bucket so when we are looking for uh, similar items in, in one bucket we are missing some items that are hashing, to, uh, hashing outside that bucket and also we want we don't want that we want all the similar similar items to be hashing to the same bucket so ideally we want to minimize false negatives as much as possible in this in this approach on the other hand false positives are the cases where dissimilar pairs hash to the same bucket uh, this is not ideal but it can be tolerable because at the end of the day we might end up doing a few more comparisons um, by comparing dissimilar items within each bucket. So it's not a really big problem for us. The biggest problem is to reduce false negative rates in, in, this, in this method. Uh, another big downfall of um, this um, locality sensitive hashing algorithm is that for some similarity measures, we may not, these, ha these hash functions may not actually exist. Uh, there we can prove that there are certain mathematical properties have to hold so that uh, these uh, f have to hold for the similarity measure so that um, a family of hash functions uh, can exist so that we could do the hashing. Uh, as an example, uh, one minus similarity, one minus the similarity of x and y should satisfy the triangle inequality and there are also other other conditions that these similarity measures have to 
satisfy so that hash functions uh, a family of hash functions exist uh, there are I'm, I'm showing some example of cases when uh, this uh, such a family of hash functions do not exist and these these two cases are um, dice coefficient and overlap coefficient which are two similarity measures between sets basically the intersection over uh, the average of uh, cardinality for instance is the dice measure but there are more interesting problems in which uh, such family of hash functions actually exist and uh, these are uh, similarity for similarity measures that are uh, some of them are very interesting uh, for instance for washer stain distance or earth movers distance uh, as a similarity measure a family of hash functions exist for jacquard similarity a family of hash functions exist which gives rise to the min hash algorithm and uh, this is basically used for web crawling and analyzing textual data and uh, finding similar textual data within a large corpus of data. Um, the next interesting case is cosine similarity uh, in which a family of hash functions exist for this case, for this similarity measure. And this family of hash functions gives, gives rise to the SimHash algorithm, which is used for comparing real valued vectors like feature vectors and embeddings in machine learning applications. Uh, I'll, I'll be talking more about the SimHash algorithm in, in the next few slides. Um, uh, but before that, um, there is, um, I, I just want to talk about a, a simple trick that helps us minimizing, minimize false negative rate in locality sensitive hashing. Uh, and this is actually an important case because ideally, as I, as I said earlier, we want to reduce the false negative rate as much as possible. So imagine that we have a similarity function for which a, a family of hash functions exist that we can use uh, for locality sensitive hashing. Uh, the way what we do is we pick a few um, hash functions from this family. In, in this case, I picked five hash functions and I applied these hash functions on my data set and I basically found, um, found some buckets uh, and basically put, the, put all the data into some buckets. So during search time, if I use one hash function, I need, I only compare the points within each bucket uh, and that's it but uh, in this case uh, where we are where we are using many different uh, hash functions so here for instance five hash functions uh, we compare uh, points uh, that exist in all five uh, hash functions so uh, as in other words assume that a point like the red point here a red data point here exists so, and that red data point maps to different buckets under these hash functions so uh, the way it works is that uh, we say that uh, two points are similar if they wind up in the same bucket for at least one of these uh, these uh, hash functions so in other words, we compare all the points, uh, all the points with the red point, uh, all the points in the same bucket for all of these functions. And if there is at least, if, if there is any point in all of these functions, all of these buckets, we say that that point is similar to the red point. Of course, here we do, <coughs> we do more comparisons because we are comparing almost five-fold, assuming that different data points are mapped uh, to... Uh, we can compare up to five points, up to five times, uh, assuming that there are different, different data points in, in each bucket. But then, of course, it reduces the false... Uh, we, can, we, can, we will show that it reduces the false negative rate in, in the next few slides. So um, the way sim hashing algorithm works is that it's a 
it's applied on uh, real valued vectors and these are very common vectors of course uh, they, they can be feature vectors in a machine learning model or or embeddings in uh, word embedding or graph embeddings or things like that so they are all over in machine learning and deep learning applications and it's it's basically the case that many times we want to compare these points these these embeddings as the case of shoes in in the amazon website imagine i have a feature vector for that shoe and I want to to pick uh, shoes clothes that that are closer to to the to the shoe that I found. So I need to find the embedding to compare these embedding with nearby embeddings. <clears throat> so the idea, the basic idea behind SimHash is the idea of sketching. In sketching, we basically dissect the the real real uh, real uh, d dimensional space into um, many into di into k different segments and we do this through uh, by uh, intersecting this uh, space with k random d dimensional hyperplanes so in this case in this case for instance uh, imagine that k is equal to 4 and we dissect this, this space with four uh, four hyperplanes and then we uh, the points that lie in the same segment of the space, we say that they belong to the same bucket. This makes makes a, makes sense because it's basically uh, a very rational thing to do. We just dissect the space, and points that are closer to each other they wind up in the same bucket. And but although it's very simple in 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 this case, it's also there are proofs that it works very well. Uh, in other words, this, uh, this family of hash functions that, it, that we use is basically we are using a random, random vector and we are doing, finding the inner product of that random vector with the point and it basically that tells us whether and if that inner product is greater than or equal to zero the hash value would be one otherwise the hash value would be zero. So in other words uh, the point other either either falls on this side of the hyperplane or or the uh, other side of the hyperplane, and that's basically translating uh, that translates the the points uh, to a Hamming a Hamming space, which is very useful in computer applications. Um, so the way these these hyperplanes are built is by a uh, they're built. Um, by using random independent random vari independent Gaussian distributions in each element of the hyperplane uh, vector and uh, it's, it's a well-known theorem in probability theory that if um, if the elements if if the elements of a vector are independent Gaussian distribution normal distribution vectors then we can prove that the angle the angle of that hyperplane follows a uniform distribution in in the space so in other words <clears throat> if i have a two points x and y um, and they have uh, an angle theta between them the probability of the event that a random hyperplane uh, cuts through these two points um, or it's basically equal to theta over pi because uh, theta follows a uniform distribution. And the probability that um, such a, a hyperplane doesn't cut through these is equal to 1 minus theta over pi. And that's the if we denote that by p, that's the probability of the event that these two points um, map to the same bucket for for just one proje projection or one hyperplane and of course in a, in one sketch there are many pro projections so there are k projections <clears throat> so because and if we use k projections in order for these two points to 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 belong to the same bucket across all across the across one sketch uh, none of these random planes uh, should cut through them um, because they should basically reside in the same segment of the space. And the probability of that event is of course p to the k because these are independent random planes. 
and uh, so the so then based on based on these uh, the probability of these two points not mapping to the same bucket is 1 minus p to the k and uh, and if you use so that's just for one sketch if you use uh, s number of sketches the probability of the, uh, the probability that none of these sketches um, share uh, the probability that these two points do not share any bucket across all of these sketches is do not or do not map to the same bucket across all these sketches is of course 1 minus p to the k to the s and then we can basically argue that based on this the probability that they we can find at least one sketch that these points so that these points um, share a bucket in that sketch is 1 minus this probability or this this probability so that's the probability of the event that um, at least the, uh, the, the that these two points share um, being being considered similar by the locality sensitive hashing algorithm. Uh, I just talked about this one a little bit because I wanted to show this uh, plot here. So imagine so what this plot is telling us is that imagine in this equation. I fixed the number of k or the number of hyperplanes I'm using in my sketching algorithm. Let's say k is equal to 4. And um, let's say uh, then the, the, the only parameter here that I have here is uh, the only other parameter is s. And uh, if I assume that p, and also if you notice that there is a unique one-to-one -one pro correspondence between p and theta, theta being the angle between these two points, and p being the probability that the points map to the same bucket for each random plane uh, or for each projection. Um, we can. Uh, this plot shows a plot of p, a plot of this probability across different values of p. And of course, because as the p increases, this means that uh, the points are closer to each other. So uh, for every value of p, we can find the corresponding value of theta. So p equals 1 if theta is 0. So for sure, those two points uh, map to the same bucket because they are the same points. And uh, if p, if theta is 180, any, any plane uh, cuts through those, and so the probability is 0. Uh, but anywhere in between, um, so we can plot the probability of the event um, that they share a specific. Um, they share a specific. Uh, they are. They are basically considered similar. Um, so, uh, for for a bucket to be, uh, this plot shows that basically at across each threshold value for. P, uh, if we choose P as the as the threshold value that we use during the bucketing process, uh, the upper case would be false negative, and the uh, the upper side of this equation would be uh, false negative, and then the lower uh, the lower area would be the false positive. We want to, of course, reduce the false negative rate. So as we increase the the number of sketches from uh, left to right so this this plot shows the five number of sketches this is for 10 number of sketches and this is for 100 number of sketches you can see that for a specific probability of 0.5 which is equivalent to an angle of 90 degrees um, uh, with a hundred sketches the false negative rate is almost zero so we can basically although we need to do a significant amount of computations for 100. Uh, then we can also force the false negative rate to be uh, zero. And uh, yeah, so uh, for every value of s, there is a specific, we can sp find the, the corresponding value of theta for which uh, the false negative rate is very close. And this is the, these are the actual thresholds that these are, this is how people uh, design uh, the bucketing threshold probability for uh, for sim hash algorithm so this way 
uh, they make sure that false negative rate is zero in, in K or practically zero, very close to zero. And then, uh, of course, they might get higher uh, computational cost because of increased uh, false positive rate. So in summary, um, LSH or locality sensitive hashing is a very efficient nearest neighbor search, which is used for um, a large number of data points. It can be used for crawling huge amounts of text, like on the, on the internet and finding similar pieces of text. Um, the min hash algorithm is the one that's used in that case uh, for, t for comparing text because the similarity measured in, in textual comparisons would be Jacquard similarity. And it's very useful to for finding plagiarism um, examples. Uh, there are also um, other applications of locality sensitive hashing. It can be used to compare feature vectors, feature embeddings, and SimHash is the algorithm to, the, to use when we have the similarity measure as cosine similarity. And it's actually very efficient and it can handle billions of data points. And uh, depending on our other similarity measures, we can come up with other hashing techniques like min hash and, and sim hash. And um, if, of course, if the similarity function uh, satisfies uh, specific, uh, specific probabilities. Thank you.